Hi everyone, I'm Glenn Kaiser. I'm in Chicago and uh, whether you're seeing this in the morning, afternoon or evening or whether you're rewinding it, which is a great idea because you're going to need to rewind it. I'm going to put a lot of information in a very short space of time here. Uh, hopefully you will come away with some ideas about how to build a very simple, primitive, one string guitar and of course you can take the information that I'm going to give you to make it a two string or three string. I'll talk a little about that. Um, the history is very s simple. When I was young, uh, probably early teens, uh, I discovered blues music and I discovered early on that black uh, and poor whites in the south of the United States, uh, blues men and women, of course, came up from poverty. The, the black folks out of slavery, their parents at least, or grandparents and some of them. And with all the poverty and the struggle uh, of just surviving, how to create music. So of course they could sing, they could clap their hands and stomp their feet. And But one of the other things that they had was the possibility of building a simple primitive guitar. How? Out of what? Well, out of whatever they had around. And they usually had access to maybe a straight uh, limb from a tree, a stick of some sort. Um, if nothing else, a couple of nails in the side of a porch, uh, the side of a barn or whatever. Um, they could pound a couple of nails in, take a piece of wire from a broom or baling wire uh, uh, on a farm area, in the farm areas, and string that thing out and tighten it up until it held a note and then they could bang on it with a stick uh, or they could pluck it uh, with their fingers or with, a, with a, a, the end of a, of a turkey feather uh, just to make noise and up and down with a piece of glass or a smooth stone maybe the back of a, of a jackknife uh, to be able to make music and change the notes. So what we're talking about today is found object very primitive uh, guitar building and that's what I want to show you. And I've got a lot to show you. Again, you can always rewind if you miss something or if you don't understand specifically what I meant by what I was saying. That's the beauty of learning by seeing as well as by hearing. And at glenkaiser.com, that's my main website, glenkaiser.com, you can uh, go and search. And there's a bunch of articles, the most recent one uh, with actually a, a photo and a <laughs> quick sketching by me, what a, what a wonderful piece of art that is, uh, of a one string slide guitar. And a bunch of discussion, you know, directions and stuff, detail. So that's what we're dealing with today. Here we go. I'm gonna first of all show you um, guitars that I've built. Um, and actually maybe before that even, I, I should show you some of the tools that I normally use. Time for the reading glasses. I've gotten old enough, I gotta have these babies. So it's nice to have at least a good, a sharp knife. Be careful, and especially uh, if you're younger, I'm not responsible, you have to be careful. Uh, mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, you know, whoever, don't cut yourself. Nice to have a good pliers, and one that you can snip wire and string with. Um, these are helpful for a lot of reasons, which you'll find out and see in a bit. Uh, nice to have some kind of a little tape measure if you wanna know what's going on about scale length. Uh, scale is between what's called a bridge and a nut. Uh, every guitar has a bridge and a nut, and I'll explain that, and you'll see them in a moment. And then you have to think about things you can mark a couple of spots on the neck for positions. So when you put whatever you use for a slide up on the neck, that's the note you get. And um, I'll explain all that as we go. So things you can use to mark if you have to do some cutting, especially if you use a cigar box for a body. Um, if you happen to use a, a metal cookie tin, whether it's round or square or whatever, tin snips are really helpful. Simple basic tin snips. Uh, or you can use a hacksaw to make cuts and then use a nice solid uh, pliers to bend the pieces inward on the top uh, and on the bottom 
and then you put the neck through. Very simple things to do and you can use whatever you have around, but these are important. And then screwdrivers, and usually I use Phillips head screws, um, and sometimes I use flathead screws with one slot. So it's nice to have, this has two, a larger and a smaller flat uh, screwdriver. And this of course is Phillips and has a larger and a smaller. And it just depends on what you have for screws. Um, obviously it's nice to have glue if you want to glue something together. Often I don't even use glue anymore. I just screw things together tightly and it depends. If, if it's metal and it's not tight against the wood, it'll buzz. So you have to think about things like that. And then what am I talking about when I talk about slides? Well, the easiest way to play slide guitar, well, the, the, the main way it's, it's played is like this. And by the way, this was a CO2 capsule, capsule that a friend in Canada, thanks Bim, uh, gave me when the last time I was up there, smoothed this out probably on a, on a wheel, um, brass wheel or something. And this works great for a metal slide, but slides all sound different on the strings, depending on what you use. These little plumber's fittings are nice because you can play it on a tabletop like that, or you can flip it around and play it like this. Uh, which is the normal way on the ring finger. Now some people will actually use their little finger. I don't find these quite as comfortable. They're a little too big for my, big around for my fingers. These are brass. They work fine. That way if you played a two or especially getting into three, four, or even up to six strings with frets on a neck, if you happen to get into that later on, then you can actually be playing like so and then you can switch over to play slide if the strings are up high enough um, to where, because, and the strings need to be up off the neck a bit to play slide properly. You don't press them down onto the neck with a slide, which is why you don't really need frets. This is where a primitive guitar is so easy. Sometimes I use little pieces of copper. These are so small, they're a little odd there, but they work great for that. So sometimes I'll use a little piece of copper, especially on a one string, which is referred to as a diddly bow. And um, you can find all of these at hardware stores. This is a little piece of conduit that I've used for a slide often. It's a little large. You can obviously line it uh, with uh, tape uh, in reverse, the sticky side, you know, touching inside. You build it up and build it up until it fits right. So you can use that on a, on probably on a, it's not quite wide enough for a three string guitar, but for a one or a two stringer, easy enough. Or what I do is I kind of pinch them like this. And as long as you can smooth it with steel wool, sandpaper, or better yet, if you happen to have a shop with a, with a wheel on it, you know, you, you put a, I do this all the time on, on, you know, in shop, which we have a shop that I get to use from time to time. So different items you can use for a slide. I happen to really appreciate all these, everything bagel seasoning. I usually get it with the jalapeno in it. Uh, so, I mean, especially like this, <laughs> when it's in my lap or on a tabletop. I mean, it can be played that way too. And, I, and I, I, I scratch the edges off of the paper um, to use it. These are hot sauce bottles. I love, love, love hot peppers, uh, ghost peppers, uh, habanero, scotch bonnets, whatever. Hotter the better, Carolina Reaper. So. These obviously you can cut down and create slides out of little bottles. Um, I often just take the paper off about that much. And once it's good and smooth and clean, that's the one I use. Now you can also do it this way if you want. There are different ways to hold a slide and it depends on what's comfortable and how you want to play it. And then of course you can put a piece of string with a couple of screws. If you can find a way to attach, you know, a string now you've got a strap for your guitar, so you can play it up like this, or you can play it in your lap or play it on a tabletop. When you play it on a tabletop, it will resonate, uh, which means the sound will be more amplified. Now I'm talking about acoustic guitars now. I'm not talking about putting pickups in them or on them, which you can also do. That's a whole other story. For another way to play, if you don't want to beat on it with a beater, which is, you're going to hear that, all that in a little while, I sometimes take old credit cards or gas cards and create a pick out of them. See, and, and I have four picks in one. <laughs> and all you do is cut them apart and just take a, take a simple scissors, 
cheap little scissors and just curve them around, round a little bit on round. And now you've got a serviceable pick. I also, when I play, I use my fingers. So I'll sometimes use my fingers and I'll sort of, sort of palm the pick. So I'll be playing like this and then I want to hear a little different tone or sound. So I'll be playing like this with a pick and then I'll do this. And then I'll go back to fingers and then I'll bring the pick back out. So there are different ways to play, different slides to use. It's not a matter of what's right or wrong. It's what feels good. It's what works for you. It's where you can play better, quicker, more accurately, and get a better vibrato on the string, which you're going to hear in a little while. Now this, <laughs> this was a uh, hot salt. It was, it was ghost pepper, ghost chili infused salt. Somebody sent me a packet of several different kinds of these. This little baby works as long as you don't put that against the string. You, you want it to sound out clearly with the glass. Pretty solid. So that makes a great little slide. So there's all sorts of things you can use for a slide and um, all different ways to play these. Why am I focusing on diddly bows on one stringers? By the way, Bo Diddley took his name from diddly bow. Diddly bow was a slang term. I'm diddling around on a bow. They would literally have a bow. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you, the first little instrument here, and by, by the way, I have dozens of these things that I built. So I couldn't on the day find the stick I wanted to find, a nice solid, hard, straight stick. But I did have a Home Depot, which is all over the United States, a paint stirrer, which also happens to be uh, like a yardstick for measuring. And I had an old wound electric guitar string. So this one, I drilled a little hole. Sometimes you use a drill or you can use a nail if it's thin enough. You can pound through gently, or you can take a screw of some sort, the right size, and you can maybe first put the indentation in with a, a hammer and nail. Sometimes my hammer works like this <laughs> with the pliers. And pop, 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 pop. Move it around a little, dig it out a little. If you don't have a drill, that's okay. And slowly and carefully to make the hole just big enough because on, on guitar strings, electric or acoustic metal strings, you have a little, what I refer to as a string nut. It's a little brass end that the strings are attached to. All acoustic and electric strings, unless they're nylon, have that. Nylon strings, you can tie a bunch of knots uh, to, and then you just feed the string through the hole. You put it up over, if, if you would be right-handed, you know, this would be, you'd play a guitar, right? So my right, my left hand. That would be, on any guitar, would be referred to whatever this is that lifts the string up. That's called the bridge. Now, most guitars also have a nut. Uh, it's made out of plastic or bone or brass, metal of some sort, uh, ebony, whatever. And the strings will be low enough because you're pushing it down on the neck. But any slide guitar the strings have to be up off the neck for the string to sound, okay? And so then you'd have, most of the time, you'd, well, regular guitars, you'd have not only a bridge, but a nut. And they function to hold the string up, or strings. So you see what I've done here. I went in reverse. Instead of putting the bottom of the string where it normally would go, I put it up at the top. And then I ran the string down and I, I literally did a wrap around, um, and hopefully you, you can see that as a close up, but I did a wrap around as tight as I could before I put what I was going to stick in there for a bridge. And once I got it as tight as I could, I used a pliers to pull it tight, 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 and wrap it more tight, and wrap it within itself, and ultimately get it as tight as I could. Then I bent the bow just enough to put the bridge in. And once I got it up, I got that, okay? Now, this is not a normal diddly bow, but it is a diddly bow and it can be used like one. Uh, let me explain. Now, again, the difference in tone 
is huge because there are so many variables. A wound string, a thicker, lower string, um, a thinner, plain string that's not wound. These are going to be more raspy. Uh, a thin, thinner string, which is a plain guitar string. It won't be as raspy, so it'll sound clearer, sweeter. Uh, it'll be tuned higher usually. The lower strings, you'll get a lower tone. But however you string them, I would say, do, however you do it, make it fairly tight before you even put in a, a bridge, and if you need to, a nut. So here, <laughs> this literally could be a diddly bow if I had a very small box, or if I created a very small box. You know, four sides, a bottom, maybe a top, and I cut just that deep, right? And then open the top, and slid it in, and shut it tight. Screwed it in or glued it in tight so that the box would be solid and wouldn't move. And that would resonate. And the idea of, well, resonator guitars, a dobro, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Resonation would be the string vibration through the bridge, through the neck, and out of or off of, or both, the body, whatever it is, a box, whatever. And so then you end up, this could be a diddly bow with a small box. So are you ready for this? But you know what I decided to do? I didn't make this thinking about diddly bows. I made it thinking about a mouth bow, which is about the earliest African and Native American in the United States. A number of uh, tribes use these and on occasion still, you may still find here and there Native American people from the South and other places using this. And it's largely from Africa. And they, I guess, realized from hunting bows, they could do this. So you can make a, a mouth bow pretty quickly out of almost nothing, right? So that's the first one I want to show you. I'm going to move along here. For a number of years, I played at Sturgis uh, Motorcycle Rally, and uh, this one's called Paid For. <laughs> you can see what it is. It's simply an old and a small a uh, clip for paper for taking notes. Somebody had thrown it out, and I found it, cleaned it up, and uh, I used zip ties, drilled a couple of holes on either side of the neck, put in two zip ties, again, nice and tight, as tight as I could make them, as straight as I could make it. I made marks to where all the basic notes are, and at Sturgis, I literally attached, let's see, I can just about see where the tape was, I think right here, I attached a piezo pickup, a simple pickup that you can learn about. By the way, get, if you want to really dig into all of these things and, and how to build, Cigar Box Nation, one word, CigarBoxNation.com. There's all kinds of cigar box, uh, cookie tin, you know, biscuit tin, um, and, and various Diddly bows, a two string, three string, six stringers, off the charts. Some of them are works of art. They sell for several hundred dollars. Uh, we're talking P90 pickups, <laughs> humbucking like Les Paul pickups, uh, single coil, whatever. Selector switches, steampunk stuff with brass, and I mean, it's off the charts. But CigarBoxNation.com, uh, our friends over at CB Giddy. By the way, I don't get any money for this. I love these people and I love what they do. There's all sorts of ideas, tuning, blah, blah, blah. So this one, there's the string nut. And I just drilled a hole here and I fed it right through, right through the neck, which was simply a straight and pretty solid piece of hardwood. I don't know if it's maple, I think it might be. And then you see what I did. This seemed to work good enough for a bridge. I didn't need to put anything else in there. I have it on an angle. 
And because it was a little too close to the neck, I put a single, and this one happens to be brass, uh, a single little screw um, and, and carefully screwed it in and that functions as the nut. And you see my fine tuner? My fine, my fine and wonderful tuner is an eye bolt with a wing nut. Often you don't need anything else. Now sometimes what I'll do is I will put a, well I don't have any uh, that aren't connected right now, but I will put a, this is also called a nut in, in the US and Canada and so on, um, that, that little end piece. So I'll sometimes put a nut there to lift the string up off the neck. And so if you, depending on how you build, a, especially a one string guitar, you don't have to worry about the tuning. It's, it, it, it doesn't have to match the tuning of the second or third or sixth strings, it's just one string. And then you can tune it to what, however you want. You have to drill or some way get that hole in and screw it in nice and tight. And what you end up on this one is with this. Now, this one, so you see, now ready for this? You heard what you heard? You put it on a tabletop and you get more resonation. Yeah? I'll show you a little bit more about that stuff later. So that's another way. Now, this is one of my favorites recently. Even though I didn't put the neck in quite in the middle, I just eyeballed it. I didn't measure it. And, uh, but this one, I put the screw in the end of the neck and I put another screw into the neck and one more up here, round headed, to be able to affix it tightly. This is just floating. It's not epoxied in place. It's just a, a piece of a bolt. And an old Coleman's mustard tin. If you're from Britain, God bless everybody in the UK. I love this mustard. And you see where I put the string position markers, I use small little black and I sometimes use chrome uh, screws. You pre-drill a little bit. If you have, it's nice if you have a drill. You don't have to have one. This one, it was smooth enough. I didn't sand very much up here and it's already rounded there. And see that's one that I put the, the nut up top just in case I needed to keep that string up off the neck. But I didn't have to use a washer or anything else. Just eye bolt, one, uh, one nut up here and a wing nut, and no classic nut, because the string's up high enough. Okay, so that's a whole nother story. Now listen to this. See, it gets a lot louder when it has a tabletop or a box or something to resonate off of. And the tone changes, you get fuller low end, more deep and, uh, and more of the mid range when you have something to resonate from. So that's another way of approaching it. This one, <laughs> there are all sorts of ways to create a tuner. And that is from a sort of a door lock where you'd put a, a, a lock on a door for the base. I screwed it in and then I put, I decided I'm gonna put this on the bottom instead of putting the tuner at the top, I'm putting the bottom. And you see what I did. I, I reversed, I turned the wing nut backwards and then I put the string down and then you can tune it by doing that, right? By, turn, by turning this. And this one, I wanted a little more resonation. This is just a hunk of plywood thrown out. So I screwed in the top and before I put any of this in, remember I had the string very low. I made it super tight. Then I took an old Altoids tin and I did a little pre-drilling and simply screwed it into the board on both ends. But it, I, I wanted it to be a little higher and so I took a piece of this stuff. Every now and then I'm around carpenters who throw away bits and pieces 
And you can, of course, create something like that. So I had something for a bridge, but again, I didn't need a nut. And you can tune it this way if you want, up or down, figure out what note. Now again, check it out. Ready? It's not much different on this one because of the Altoids tune is acting as the resonator. But you end up with a... Yeah, so there's so many ways to do this. Now I'm going to show you a few more things and move on to building, or we'll be here all day. Canjo, piece of a broken hockey stick. All right, my Canadian friends. A simple eye bolt with a wing nut, nothing else. A wound acoustic string, probably an E string. Needed something, I decided I was going to put it in on, the, on an angle. So I needed something to feed the string through, try to keep it fairly up and down the middle. You can see I, I had actually had, I actually had three, um, uh, this was going to be a three stringer, which could have been a three stringer, a little narrow, you know, it should have been a little wider, but I could have used it as a three stringer and I decided, you know what, no, I'm not going to do that with this one. I actually pre-drilled small holes and pounded little flathead nails, little chrome nails in for string markers. And this is a canjo, and the can becomes a resonator. This one, I screwed in that way, and two that way. Again, pre-drilled, just into the wood, and then screwed these small screws in nice and tight, by hand, hand tightened. And you can see the string nut, I drilled a hole just dead center, so the string would be high enough off the neck, and you end up with a tin can that you can play. <laughs> so here comes this one. So it's pretty raspy, pretty intense. Again, you can put a pickup on any one of these. There's ways to, if nothing else, you can glue uh, a piezo or something simple. Again, I'm not a sales guy, that's not why I'm doing this, but our friends at CB Giddy have all kinds of parts. And you can find all sorts of pickups. So, you see how high it is, and those holes are so tight, I drilled them so small, that I was able to go ahead and just screw it in really tight. It was hard, so I ended up using one of these up top, and sometimes I end up using a screwdriver to torque the string up when it gets nice and tight like that. You can see where I put the position markers on both necks. And I had a long bolt that I thought, I'm going to use the same bolt for both necks, for both strings. Often when I put them somewhere, I will take a, a pencil and make a pencil mark. I'm not going to sell these. These aren't for, I mean, I may give them away, but so I ended up making this for me and just uh, fun to play and mess around with. So small cigar box. And uh, what's cool about this kind of stuff is then you can, depending on how you tune it, with an interval, in this case, So, it'd be easier like this. So you get this, the possibilities of different pitch, different pitches. This is a wound string, a very thin, but it's still wound. And this is a higher, so brighter, smooth, plain guitar string. By the way, I. I typically, I typically only um, use acoustic strings when I get real serious and I play these out in concert. Not always, especially if it has a pickup on it. 
because you can affect the change with a stomp box or two or the amplifier, of course. There are so many ways to affect the tone and change things. What if all you got is a little screw and a thin little string, not much of a neck, and a, and a, and a, and a lemonade drink mix plastic that you're going to recycle? Well, you drill a hole right through the whole thing, right through the neck. You put a screw in there, and that's the, all I got, and then this one is this and this, to hold the neck in place. And then I put a screw inside before I put the neck in. And then that's a flat head, a small screw with a flat head. It's not a Phillips, it's a one wire. And I just, when I put the string in, I put it across. And again, this is tight enough that I was able to get it super tight. And that's something. There's nothing to it, right? So I mean it's just I mean this, this is what is this? It's called found object. What do you got laying around your house in the garage? in your junk drawer, what can you find at a yard sale, a garage sale, a resale shop? So, you know, you can, it doesn't matter. You can walk, 10 cents, 50 cents, you can build something. I mean, it, nothing, free, free works. I like free. So all the possibilities are there. So I've only got a few more and then I'm gonna build one in front of you. This is one of my favorites, even though it's completely weirded out. Look at that, isn't that weird? And it's in there so tight that there's nothing, well, I don't even care about doing anything with it. I don't care that the string's off. I was doing a found object cigar box guitar building clinic at Idle Wild Arts out in California. And I found this nice stick in the woods. And I cleaned it up a bit, sanded it a little, and I thought, okay, fine. One of the ladies there was kind enough to hand me this, <laughs> this little, this little uh, piece of metal bomb package that was empty. So I made some cuts with a, a knife. You gotta be careful with knives, you can cut yourself. And I drilled a hole so I could put the, the string through got another little piece of wood, screwed it in tight to the neck, and um, I had this in my tackle box for a while and it was kind of worn out so I just stuck it on there for fun. I do fish from, from time to time and did the classic of a eye bolt and a wing nut. When I was done getting it all together, Who knew how it was going to sound? I didn't. You never can tell, right? So this one... And, and it just depends on, on what you're using in terms of how it's going to sound because brass, uh, metal of different sorts, glass, it's all going to sound different. Or cer certainly slightly different. So, there's a, you know, what do you got laying around? It, it, you have no idea. I sometimes go out to the woods and literally build this stuff. Okay, two more. And then we'll build one in front of you. Definitely one of my recent favorites. So one day we were out barbecuing Wendy and I uh, here at Jesus People in Chicago. And there was a small little piece of wood that I'd had and I smoothed it out with a bit of sandpaper. Got it nice and fine. You can see how I attached this string. So all the pressure is on the neck. There's no pressure really on the, on the box. This is a tough little box. She uh, bought a hairbrush 
I don't use them much anymore myself. No, I do use them on occasion. But she bought a hairbrush and this came in. It's a tight, tough, pretty tough cardboard. I've done this with shoe boxes. I mean, really. And a little screw. So I pre-drilled a little hole and screwed it in tight. And I wrapped that string around tight. And remember, I, it started with this thing white, that string right tight against the box. Okay? And there wasn't much of a lip, so I didn't have to worry about raising the string, but I wanted to raise it up enough. So I looked around the yard as the barbecue was happening. You know, I just took a knife and cut, cut the hole just a little too big on the bottom end, but I cut a hole to put the neck through. And once I got it all together, that's what I found was a little piece of brick, broken brick, uh, for a bridge. And again, this one didn't even need a nut because the string's up high enough. Check this out. Who knew, right? You never know until you build them. So you never can tell how it's going to resonate it depends on the body, the material. Now, you heard it like that. Check this out. The resonation off the table. It's just, you know, here, let me show you this. When I use a Sharpie to beat on them, which I do sometimes like this, I hang on to the end with the clip so it doesn't get caught in the strings. Sometimes I'll put something underneath it you know, so that it doesn't, not quite deep enough, but you understand what I'm saying. So you can make them out of just about anything. You can make almost any kind of body. Okay, now one more, and then I'm going to build one in front of you. This is one of my, I keep saying this is one of my favorites. They're all one of my favorites. So I used a little cigar box. And as you can see, <laughs> I had to have something on there to kind of hold it shut tight, but also to sort of stop uh, because I wanted to use this, this cheap little clothespin for a bridge. And so this is actually a piece of black wire that I wrapped around tightly. Now, this was a thin piece of wood and it wasn't that strong. So I pre-drilled and I really tightly, using a pliers, screwed in a little screw and I used a, a nut on top of it so that it wouldn't go any further. So I got it in just far enough. I didn't want it to come through the bottom. It's just about popping through the bottom now. So that would lift the string up enough. There we go. And I put another nut up here. But again, it doesn't have a classic nut like you'd normally see on a guitar, bridge nut. No nut here. But again, this is also called a nut. I'm sorry, don't, English can confuse me and I'm, I speak English. So there you go with uh, various ways to build and play. So, and again, different tone. And it, one of the things you might notice here, sometimes for string markers, I drill a hole and leave the hole. Just right through the neck on the edge there, so you can see it no matter how you play it. Yeah. So there you go. The other thing to know is on a cigar bass guitar, you have to think about what I call the lip. Some of the cigar boxes or cookie tins, particularly cigar boxes, have a thick top a thick uh, lid. And so sometimes that lid will go down so far, regardless of the thickness of the neck material that you use, you have to be careful to put it in such a way so that the lip isn't so far up that when you put the neck in, the string will hit the lip, will hit right here. It has to be, uh, you know, so when you're playing up here, you're not 
making the string deaden because it's touching the top of the box. So you have to think about the, the, the height of the, of the bridge material, whatever you're using for a bridge. Um, I've actually got a couple at home. I've used a bone, pieces of bone for bridge, which is really fun. So all of that works. Okay. So I'm going to show you a few more things and then I'm going to build. One of the things that I, uh, again, want to say be careful about sharp knives, be careful about drills, power material, if you're using a jigsaw or whatever, you know. Think about what you're doing and be careful. Usually, if I use a drill like a screw gun, usually I will use maybe a nail and a hammer, or like I said, use <laughs> to, to put a little bit of an indent in to where I'm going to drill. I try to get a little bit smaller drill bit uh, from the hole that I want to build because I want whatever I'm drilling in, a screw or whatever, I, I want it to be tight. And, and then careful, because it's got to be big enough that when you're turning the screw or whatever it is you're putting in, you don't want it to split the wood, particularly depending on what you're using for a neck. Um, so you have to be careful about all that. Sometimes I will then put in one of these little cup holders to hand tighten or hand screw, you know, dig, dig the hole a little deeper, that sort of thing. I, I do this stuff in the woods all the time and I use... You can use usually a couple of nails on a 2x4 and not even bother with any of it. I've done that too. Sometimes for the, the bridge, I'll use a round top slotted screw. And that's where the string is going to go across. Sometimes when I've had to use another one, I'll use another one up, you know, for the nut, bridge nut, for the string to go over before it goes into the tuner. Whatever, and you can use regular tuners, obviously. Another thing is nice, and that is take a nut on the end of a bolt and make it tight. And sometimes I'll take the end of a bolt, whether it's a one stringer or three stringer or even a six stringer, and the end of the actual bolt, you know, maybe I'll grab a hold of it with a pliers and take another pliers and mess up the threads on the very end where I'm going to put the where I'm going to put the, the, the nut. So then when I screw the nut on, it goes over those messed up threads and it, it's tight. This one right now is actually pretty tight. And you'll notice, if you look at it closely, hexagon. So the head of it is a hexagon and the nut is a hexagon. So it lays nice and flat. You can line them up so that they'll lay flat on top of whatever you're using for a body. So those are some tips, things to remember. In my tapas, this was good stuff, chipotle pepper. And uh, this one was uh, garlic habanero, yeah. And this one, I, I just went ahead and took a knife, tried to clean off as much of the glue and the paper as possible. Works pretty good. The other thing I wanted to show you, like I said, I prefer acoustic strings, but I don't always have them. So sometimes I'll get some cheap tape especially a bit of color and pop off a little bit and you can wrap it around neck material when you find where your notes are, your key notes. I'll show you that in a moment as well. So a lot of different ways to put position markers up or very quickly. Um, obviously, boom, once you find the notes you want, you know, and so there's a zillion ways to decorate these things, paint them, blah, blah, blah. There's no end to it. So now that I've dri driven you crazy with information, now nah, a little more. Pill bottles. The last, what I wrote on glenkaiser.com, a two by four with some nails in it, actually three nails per side, two to hold the bridge and the nut in place, two different pill bottles, and one in the back to hold the string and one in the top or the front to hold the string. And then I actually cut little pieces of this sticky stuff on the pill bottles before I put them in. And I made little squares, and that's what I used on the top of the edge of the 2x4, so I have my position markers. That one I play in my lap. Diddly bow, one string slide guitars, found object instruments. Okay, here we go. So, what is this crazy guy going to do? 
Okay, so you've seen uh, and heard a whole bunch of possibilities and that's just scratching the surface of ways to build a found object, simple diddly bow or two or three string guitar. But I'm gonna build a one stringer in front of you right now. Okay, here we go. So antacid. I eat a lot of hot peppers and a lot of hot sauce, but I also eat, my wife cooks, oh, she cooks so good. And so, antacid. No, that's not antacid, I already used it all. Ah, look at that. So here we have all sorts of cup holders, I got different sizes, this, that, and the other. Now when you're starting to use this stuff, you really want to be careful because the smaller or the lighter, the more possibility that they'll bend or break. So then you sometimes have to do stuff like smash them together or you get a couple of, um, uh, of, uh, of uh, pliers, you know, and you very carefully bend them around to make them a little bit tighter. Or you get something thicker to use, like I showed you a moment ago for a nut or a bridge. But sometimes you don't need any of it, as I've also showed you. So what I'm going to do right now, this is fairly smooth, so I didn't bother with it. I think the, this is, by the way, from a chair, and it was, th was thrown out. Um, so I grabbed it, and it's bowed. It's got a natural curve. So what I'm doing with this, I'm, I'm doing it like that, which I would do with any piece of wood anytime. If there's a natural curve, because of a, it's a, going to be a dilly bow, the way I'm going to build this, I'm going to put the curve up. So what I'm going to do first, before I do anything else, is I'm going to find out exactly where I want the string to go, and where I want the tuner to go, up top, because that's the way it needs to go. And I think that's about right. So here we go, and here we go. And this is going to be the neck. And you know, you can use a round neck, whatever. There's, a, there's, a, there's, no, there's no right or wrong. There's all, all sorts of ways to do this. So it's smooth enough, so I'm not going to bother with that. This will be how I'll play it. This is the bottom. I think this end's a little thicker. It may not be, but it seems like it's a little thicker than the other end. They might be the same, but... Eh. Yeah, I think I'm going this way. So this will be the bottom, and that'll be the top. So now I know where I am on that. And now the dangerous part, boys and girls. I don't need the top, so that's going over here. My plan, I think I'm going to keep where it says Glen and Antacid 1000. It smells pretty good. So here we got this, and this is what I'm going to do with it. Okay? Now how? There's several ways, and I have to think about the lip and rising the string up. So I'm thinking, well, the easiest way would be to put a screw right in the end. So the screw right in the end to be able to fix it, and then maybe one more up here. So I've got two to hold it in place. So the first thing I want to do is I'm eyeballing exactly where that screw would go as close to the center as possible. I think I'm going to take this right here and if I'm not getting the hole I want, well there's a couple of things. I usually bring a sharper screw or a nail to do this, but I thought I'm going to bring very little over today because I want to show you that you can do it with very little. So here we go, there's a bit of a hole. Now, again, there's several ways to do this. This might be the sharpest one. Which is the sharpest one I have? Mm -mm -mm. Eh. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take the end, the back end. I can see where the hole is. 
and I hold it up, try to center it as best as I can. I mean, I'm not even measuring, right? I'm just eyeballing this. So I screw in the end a little bit, so I have a mark. Or I should have, yeah. And now I think what I'm going to do... Usually at this point, let me see here, there we go. Usually at this point I would stand up. I just wanted to start it a little bit. And I probably want to go just a little deeper before I screw it together. Ah, there we go. Now this is, I don't know what kind of wood it is, but it's porous. It's not great wood, that's for sure. But it'll work. Why? How do I know it? I don't know that. But I'm pretty sure it will because I've done this kind of thing before. Now if I really wanted to cheat, I would go ahead and just screw this in. Mm. Mm. Why not? Because this is a real screw. It's a little big. It's a little thick. Nah, I don't think so. Now, one of my favorite term, uh, comments is, there's always a workaround, which means there's always another way to do it. And there really is always another way. And I just had an idea. And part of my idea is this. This can function in two ways. Now this is where I should have brought a second screwdriver or a little hammer over. Because this isn't quite wide. Ah, maybe, maybe I can get it just wide. Yeah, good, all right, fine. Now you gotta be careful with this kind of, even with these kind of tools, because if you're not careful, you'll hurt yourself. All right, so there you go. And this will be the end. So I screw it in just slightly and I find the slot. Line it up best I can. And this is the beauty of pliers. Sometimes pliers really help to finish things off. I'm going to keep going just one more time. You see, I kept it on just a slight angle. Just a slight angle. So it's not exactly perpendicular there. I'll explain why in a moment. So, not perfect, but it'll work. Anything I do isn't perfect. So I gave up trying for perfection a long time ago. That, that kind of stuff drives me crazy. And I think sometimes we drive ourselves crazy trying to perfect instead of making use of what we got. Now this one, again, you gotta be careful. What you don't wanna do is hurt yourself. This is pretty thick plastic. In fact, this part may be thicker than the bottom, so. But I wanted to, I wanted to give it a little more strength of the neck tight with what is being used as a body. Now I can feel it going into the wood a little bit as well, and I want that. Okay. And once we get that down, then, let's see, this little guy is a pretty nice little guy. Oh yeah. See, now it's going to get tighter and tighter and harder. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the neck down like this because I want it tight to the top. I don't want it to go down below. So I'm pushing the neck against what is going to be, well, it acts as the body, right? So I ended up putting the neck on a little bit of an angle, but I don't care. I would rather show you how to do this and show you how quick and simple you can throw something together than not do it at all. So here we go, here we go. Closer, a little more, a little more, a little more. Now, had I had a small screw, this would have been simple, real simple. But because I didn't have a small screw, I just used what I had. This was the only screw I brought. Well, I brought this little guy over, but it's a little bit thick at the thick in the in the depth. You know what I mean? That way it was fine. But the the width of it, I should say, really, a little bit too thick. So I didn't want to mess with that. So now what do you do? Because now you're gonna. Oh, I blew it. See, the the curve is that way more, right? Yeah, it is. And that's sticking up. That's gonna mess up my string, isn't it? No, it isn't because there's always a workaround. Ready? Ah, the beauty. Nothing's gonna mess up nothing. So now we got that. Now what else? Well, I think today, probably the one I wanna use probably is going to be one of these thicker cup holders. And there's so many ways we could do this, but I think I'm going to go, well, let's see, we've pretty much got all chrome, so I'm going to stick it with, stick with chrome maybe. Should I do that? Yeah, why not? I could, I could use either one of these, but it'll take a lot less time to do one of these, so I'm going to try with another cup holder, and I'm not going to use a real heavy gauge string. If I used a heavier gauge string, then I could be in trouble um, with being able to hold tune. So before I go any further, I go up here and I think, where does the bend really happen? And also, how long of a string? I've got a used string. You know, I save used guitar strings all the time. So I'm going to run that through there. I'm going to bring it to here. So I'm going to say right about there is where it should be, which that should work pretty good, actually. So. I make a mark, and I think this time, got to have a little, little bit of a hole to start with. Okay. And this is usually the hard part, to really get it done right. And sometimes I will go off to the side a little so that that one string will go more right straight down the neck, you know, right in the middle. So sometimes it's going to be off a little bit. Today I just want to keep moving and I want to show you how to do it. That's why you got to be careful, eh? You can definitely hurt yourself if you don't know what you're doing or if you don't go slow enough. But like I say, today I want to keep moving. And this wood is porous enough, and this knife is a sharp enough point, etc., that I can probably pull this off pretty quickly. Yeah, 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 there's so many ways here. Well, six of one, half dozen the other. I want a little, I want a little more beef. Let's go for that one. All right. Now, if the first thing doesn't work, there's always another. And that's the beauty of this. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave the cup holder just like it is at this point. And you can see it's got a little uh, lip at the top here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put the string across in such a way that stays up above that. 
Now if I need to, I can put it together, the cup holder with the pliers and so on, so that it's more like a one of these guys, <laughs> an eye screw. This is the beauty of these kind of strings. That little, what I refer to as a string nut, boom, you got a loop. It's that simple. And on this kind of a build, what I often do, it's as simple as this. The very thing that I'm using to hold the neck in place, this, well, this and this, but this, I can put a string on it. I mean, a, not a guitar string, but a piece of string. Put it here and up here, or even put a hole through here or whatever. Put another, uh, another uh, one of these guys up here. And now I have a guitar strap, as it were, right? So simple as that. But to actually string this puppy, I literally put the string over the whatever I use down here. And I'm not worried about a bridge right now. The one thing I'm worried about is getting this thing as tight as I can possibly get it up here. And so I wrap around one time. A second time, by the way, this is one of the hardest things to figure out how to do. And I often string, I've been stringing guitars up for, <laughs> well, since I was 13, and I often prick myself. This one I probably won't. And so I run it through, create a knot, and I keep it all above that little lip. And here's what you got to do. This is the beauty. You gotta, gotta, gotta use pliers. Get it as tight as you can. And I'll usually do this a couple of times to get it as tight as I possibly can. And uh, I'm not worried about the, the note, you know, that I'm where it's going to be tuned to at this point. I just want it to sound good and I want it to hold a note once I get it tuned. So I've, I've gone through twice. And sometimes I'll go a third time, but this time there's a little bit of a hole here, a little gap. So I'm going to run it through the gap between those knots and try to snug it up as much as I can. And now, as you're about to see, it's on a little bit of an angle and it wants to pull out. So now I got to screw it in. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to even bring it down lower. But at this point, it looks like it may actually work. Okay. And the issue is you have to have enough depth to actually be able to tighten it. You know, the note to get the note to tighten up. And that can be a problem sometimes, which is why often I use something other than what I'm using right now. But I just wanted to go for it, because why not? All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. So, that's pretty tight. And I've got a little bit more room to tighten it further if I need to. And so now, I think what I'm going to do now a piece of wood like this would be fine for a bridge. The first thing I want to try, even though it's not as high, it's not going to lift it up as high, is I'm going to use my little hexagon small little hexagon gun bolt and nut and try to put it in the center as best as I can. I think I'm going to do it this way instead of the other way. And here's the hard part. And that is getting it to hold the note 
that you want it to hold. And you make sure that the, the paper isn't toward the string. That's a little bit low. So, I mean, I would probably lift it up. I would probably lift it up with something, probably a piece of wood or even a, well, there's a, a, several ways we can do this, but. Losing the notes, so you're going to have to tweak it up a bit more. But you get the idea. Now, just for the sake of you hearing it. Oh boy! Oh, oh I want to show you this. Another way now could be to lift it up with a slot screw like that. You know, just a regular wood screw, and then put the string over that, and that works. Um, or this is a little too fat, you know, too thick as well as too long but you get the idea, so it can lift up the string and it'll sound out great. Now this, I wish I had a shorter one of these, but I didn't bring anything else over, but it'll give you an idea. Now this one leans down so I can do this a little better. Anyway, you get the point. So, now what I'm going to do, because I don't want it to be permanent, I'm just going to go ahead and find a couple of notes and explain this to you a little bit. But you get the idea, okay? And let's see here. I'm going to take this. And we're almost done. I hope you're not too bored. And I hope you're learning a few things. And like I said earlier, the beauty is you can always go back. And look at the look at elements that you've heard. I didn't even I usually use a scissors or I could bring a knife. I didn't bother with it. So so there is right about there. So now I've marked a few positions real quickly. Isn't that pretty? No, it isn't pretty, but it, I, I just simply wanted to do it quickly to show you what's what. So you end up with uh, basically if this was an E, I have no idea where it's tuned right now. I don't have perfect pitch, or I could tell you, but you end up with you end up with uh, four four notes that are key notes, and then you find the notes within them by ear. And what you've got is is you've got if this was an E, this next one up would be. Um, well, think of this. Let's start with that. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, to. Do, re, mi, fa. Oops. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, to. Do, re, mi, fa. So, do, fa, so. Do. That's an octave, what's called an octave. It's 12 steps up. Same note, 12 up. 12 steps in the tone. So if you're just thinking do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, do, fa, so, do. Do, 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 do right now. It's, I'm a little off with this one, so I'll, I'll move it. Uh, but anyway, and then, you know, later on, you can go back and you can put the exact marks, or you can wrap a nice piece of blue tape all the way around the neck, so you have 
nice straight position markers that you can see. Wish I was in heaven sitting down. Wish I was in heaven sitting down. Oh, my Lord, I wish I was in heaven sitting down. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? To that same old place, sweet home Chicago. So you see what you got here is a very basic one string guitar. Now the other thing I should tell you is once you get the bridge in place, whatever you use for a bridge, once you've got it settled, like I said, I usually put a mark uh, or I glue it in, in place or I screw it in tight. So the bridge should never move because if the bridge moves, your position markers will be in the wrong place. So for example, if that was an E, just to say, I don't know what the note is down there, but if that was an E, the Fa would be an A. That'd be a B. So E, A, B, E. Whoops, E, E, E. Whoops. Anyway, you get the point, I hope. <laughs> so that's the way you tune them. So there's an idea and a simple way to go about it. Now, there's, again, you can use, I mean, it's just. There's, there's just no end to the, the way you can play it, the way you can set them up, the way you can use them. But you end up with a single string guitar, uh, found object, diddly bow, using whatever you got. Man, I, I should have brought a couple more small pieces over here. But there you go. So thanks for watching. Glenn Kaiser in Chicago saying I hope you're enjoying uh, a little lesson and maybe more information than you wanted. But that's the beauty. You can turn me off anytime you like. Isn't that good? <laughs> and I hope I'm turning you on with some information and a little bit of fun and a little bit of joy. Thanks again for watching.